In this video, we're going to talk about color perception, how we see color. And we have to start by talking about light and wavelengths, because that's what determines color in the first place. Light is a form of electromagnetic energy that has a specific wavelength. And that wavelength determines the color that we see. What do I mean by wavelength? Well, you can kind of see it on this visualization here, but light travels in waves, and the distance between two different peaks of those waves is what we call wavelength. Now, I want to pause and make a note about the huge variability in wavelengths between different forms of light. Take a look at the top portion of this visualization here. You can look at the rest if you find it interesting, but I want to focus on the top line here. Notice gamma rays have wavelengths in meters of 10 to the negative 12 meters. In case you aren't familiar with scientific notation, 10 to the negative 12 is a very tiny number. It's like 0 0.000000000001, something like that, meters, okay? A very tiny uh, wavelength we're talking about. Now go to the under, uh, other end of the spectrum, excuse me, radio uh, waves here have 10 to the third power meters as their wavelength. So huge, very long distances in between the different peaks of those waves. Notice that visible light, what we can see as humans, what's, what's uh, visible to us, is only a tiny little portion of that spectrum, and that's what I want to zone in on. So look here, you're seeing again a huge spectrum of different types of wavelengths. Notice what we can see as humans is only the light in between 400 nanometers and 700 nanometers, a tiny sliver of what's actually out there. So something around, again, it determines the color, something around 450 nanometers would appear blue, something around 550 nanometers would appear green, and something around 620 or so nanometers would appear red. Anything beyond that, we can't really see at all. And this is actually a great thing. Think about if we could see radio signals, that would be quite awful in the day and age we live in. Imagine driving with everyone listening to their radio. If you could actually see the radio waves floating around in the air, you wouldn't be able to see anything at all. It would be quite awful. So how do we see color? How do we see this in the first place? Well, there are some theories that shed light on this. First, the trichromatic color theory. This is again a theory of how we perceive color, and it suggests that our color vision is based on three primary colors, red, green, and blue. Since we have three different kinds of cones that are each maximally sensitive to the different wavelengths associated with these colors. So this is what you're seeing on this visualization. Three different types of cones, blue cones, green cones, and red cones. We call them that because that's what they're maximally sensitive to. They don't actually appear uh, blue, green, and red in your retina. They're just all the same color, but that's what they respond to. So imagine uh, light comes in, for example, that's right around here, something like 400 nanometers, maybe just shy. Imagine what different uh, cones are we going to get responses here. Uh, the blue ones will definitely respond. Green and red ones probably won't respond at all. So your brain's going to see that, and it's going to do a quick calculation. It's going to say, okay, I must be looking at the color blue. And then when it reconstructs that image for you to actually experience it, that thing that you're looking at is going to appear blue. That's obviously a simple example. Imagine if you have something right over here, well, you're going to get a little bit of blue activation, some green activation, definitely some red activation, uh, but different amounts of each, and your brain's going to kind of compute the combination of activation across these three different types of cones to say, I'm looking at this color. That's what the trichromi uh, excuse me, trichromatic theory suggests. What evidence do we have for it? Well, colorblindness is actually a great source of evidence for the trichromatic theory of color vision. I'm going to introduce two new terms here, monochromats and dichromats. Monochromats are people who only have one out of the three different types of cones. They might have all three, I should say, but only one is functional. The others might be non-functional due to some genetic defect. So what's the result? Total color blindness. Now, I want to make a note that monochromacy only affects 1 in 30,000 people, and as I said before, it's usually genetic, so if you don't have it already, you probably don't have to worry about it. But what's it like to experience the world as a monochromat? It basically just means you're going to see everything in black and white. If you don't have the three different types of cones, or at least two of them, you can't process differences in color at all, and so everything's going to appear monochromatic. Dichromats have 
two out of the three different types of cones, and this results in partial colorblindness. This is far more common, and it results in, for example, red-green colorblindness. There are different forms of dichromacy, but red-green colorblindness is the most common. And here's an example of a test you can take to see if you are dichromatic. If you can see the number in this circle of dots here, you're totally fine. The number is 74. If you're unable to see the number 74, you're dichromatic. So that's some evidence for the trichromatic theory of color vision, but what are some limitations? Well, the trichromatic theory is unable to explain afterimages. And to illustrate what I mean by afterimages, let's do a quick demonstration. This will only take about a minute. What I want you to do is fixate, focus your eyes as hard as you can on that white dot in the center of the screen. And I want you to look at that white dot for a solid 30 seconds. After 30 seconds are up, I'm going to flip the slide to a blank screen and I want you to tell me what you see. So I'm going to go ahead and record 30 seconds starting now. Alright, I'm going to flip the screen. Here we go. Okay, so what did you just see? Well, if you're like most people and you did it right and didn't look away or get distracted, you really have to look at the original image. But chances are you saw a red, white, and blue American flag. Now, you're just looking at a blank screen, right? And what I had you look at before wasn't even a red, white, and blue American flag. It was a black, green, and yellow American flag. This is an example of an after image. And the trichromatic color theory has no idea why this happens, because the only thing you're looking at when the after image comes up is just a white screen. So you're only seeing white. Well, how do you get the image of a red, white, and blue American flag? The trichromatic theory of color vision is totally confused. Here's another example, one last illusion or example I want to illustrate. Look at the black uh, arrow or plus sign in the very middle of the screen. Fixate on that for a few seconds. What you should notice, if you don't look away, just look right in the same spot and don't move. But what you should notice is the perception of a green circle circling, going around in circles around this plus sign. And all of those pink circles should disappear. If you don't see that, keep looking, you probably will. Now this is a really interesting phenomenon because there's no green dot anywhere. A green dot does not exist and yet we get the strong perception of it. Similarly, the pink dots never disappear. They're always there on the screen. The only thing that's happening is we're taking away one of those pink dots in a sequence, sort of subsequently one after the next over and over. And yet we get a very different perception than what's actually happening in reality. So, if the trichromatic color theory is totally confused by this, what do we say? There's a whole nother theory called the opponent process theory, which does have an answer to these questions. The opponent process theory suggests that we perceive colors in terms of three pairs of opposing colors, red versus green, blue versus yellow, and black versus white. The evidence for the opponent process theory is the exact limitation of the trichromatic color theory. After images always appear in opposing colors, which again provides evidence for this theory. Think back to the American flag demonstration that we just did. You saw a flag, you looked at it for 30 seconds, that was green, yellow, and black. After looking at that for 30 seconds, what you were left with in the after image was red, blue, and white. So think about the opposing colors here. You looked at green, and the parts that were green ended up looking yellow in the, uh, excuse me, red in the after image. You looked at yellow, and the parts that were yellow in the actual image ended up blue in the after image. And when you looked at black parts of the image, what ended up in your after image was white. This is the opponent process theory, and this is how it goes beyond the trichromatic color theory.